Greetings, one and all. I am Waifu Belector, the only fair human on earth, and it's been a long path, but I've finally arrived. After 83 long hours, I can finally talk to you all about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I can finally tell you what's good about it, what's bad about it, and what are just the indifferent facts about it. So, if you end up enjoying, consider liking and or subscribing. But for now, I'll just get right into this. And where do I even start with this game? You know, Rebirth being the sequel to Remake, one of the most apt comparisons I can make for this is that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is the Arkham City to Remake's Arkham Asylum. Where it isn't quite simply do the same thing we already did but more, but the structuring and approach to the game's layout is actually different. Rebirth has more modern gaming sensibilities than its predecessor. It has more modern gaming sensibilities than Final Fantasy 16. More than that though, it seems more committed to being an actual RPG than a lot of Final Fantasy games. Granted, this still isn't the most play your way or make a lot of decisions type of RPG I've played, not by a fucking long shot, but considering that a lot of Final Fantasy games are very restrictive and despite being something you think of when you think RPG, Final Fantasy often lags behind in RPG elements like choice and freedom compared to other RPGs. RPGs. When you consider that, what RPG elements are present in 7 Rebirth, what overall moderate freedom of gameplay and choice there is, it's shockingly good. As a Final Fantasy game, Rebirth is shockingly committed to the core genre elements that make RPGs what they are. It isn't turn-based combat or numbers popping off of enemies, it's freedom of choice, be that in narrative, gameplay, or both. And Rebirth is strangely going deeper into those freedom of choice waters than most Final Fantasy games I've experienced care to. And that's refreshing. It's especially refreshing because I'd say that 7 Remake already had one of the best combat systems I'd ever seen in a game. The tactical mode slowdown mid-combat basically embodies the term action RPG. But not only does Rebirth refresh the experience around the combat system by adding some more choice and wider expanses, but they just refresh the combat directly as well. And that's saying a lot. The first game was massively carried by its combat system. So to be able to refresh that, reinforce the weak points and bring everything around it up a level is very impressive. I'll get more specific. Starting with the combat itself. In the first game, if you had no ATB, you just couldn't do shit. So you've just gotta hit the enemy to get your ATB gauge moving, right? Well, what happens when you can't hit the enemy? Like if they're flying or out of reach or just move the fuck around a ton. Often when that would happen in the first game, you're just shit out of luck, dodging around, waiting for your ATB gauge to very slowly fill so you can do something, do anything. And stuff like that was frustrating. But now, there are things like synergy skills that don't use ATB so that you can do something at all times. The synergy skills are the party members partnering up to do all kinds of stuff, following up each other's attacks, parrying attacks, blocking stuff from one another, all types of shit. But there are also additions like giving Cloud a basic ranged attack so he can actually do something to flying and distant enemies. To put it plainly, combat improvements mostly boil down to having options in just about every situation. Now also, Due to the aggressive linearity of 7 Remake, well for one thing, there was no grinding. And I don't mean you didn't have to grind, I mean there wasn't the option. There was pretty much nowhere to grind. But also, and more importantly, the game always told you who was in your party at all times. You had no say in the matter. There were only 4 playable party members total, but whether it was Cloud and Aerith, or Cloud, Tifa and Aerith, or just Barret, didn't matter. Your party was fixed and you just had to make it work. Extremely on rails for something calling itself an RPG. Now, that fixed party thing still exists quite a bit in Rebirth. However, it is along the main path. 
So all through the side content, all through the large open expanses, you get to use your party of choice, which is a party of three that you can choose from the total of seven playable characters. And there are tens of hours of side content and combat encounters, so it's fine that the main path shakes things up by making you play a specific party, because you will have gotten to play a ton as who you want beforehand. Something that just didn't exist in the previous game. This amount of playable characters didn't exist, the open zone approach didn't exist, and so it's nice that Rebirth doesn't have to suffer in the same way. Now, as I said, Rebirth takes an open zone approach to its world, like God of War, Ragnarok, or Jedi Survivor. And I think their zones are great. They're appropriately sized. They're appropriately filled. The zones are designed in a way that feels feasible to finish, but also fun during the task itself. In no small part, thanks to its still amazing and now improved combat system. I almost just want them to keep adding characters to this shit like Grand Blue Relink. It's that good. So yes, the combat still leads the charge in making the game very fun for a very long time. But there is another significant force at play here. Mini games. Listen to me. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has more mini games than you can shake a fucking stick at. Every other thing you do is made into a mini game. If we ever saw the characters go to the bathroom, it would probably be a mini game. It's insane and it's amazing because most of the mini games are good and a few are really fucking good, like just be your own game level good. The main of all the main mini games is Queen's Blood, a card game that you play around the world of Rebirth. The rules are hard to explain without a step-by-step -step visual aid, but it's so fucking fun. I played every match I could and finished the whole card playing quest line, and I just want Queen's Blood to be its own game on mobile devices. Just touch it up, rebalance it for competitive play, and put it on my iPad. Oh my god. And if they had cards from the whole Final Fantasy franchise and not just seven, psh, man, please. <laughs> okay, anyway, yes, that's the main mini game, but there's also other big ones like Chocobo Racing, which again, just be your own game. Oh my god, I have so many ideas for how to turn Chocobo Racing into its own game. I might need to make that into its own separate video. <laughs> But I'm gonna focus for now. So yeah, a shit ton of mini games. There's like dolphin riding time trials. There's a FF7 version of Punch-Out basically. Fort Condor comes back. There's like a not Fort Condor game too that uses the FF13 Gambit system. The piano playing mini game, which I'm not great at. They turn the motorcycle sections from remake into a mini game. You get it, everything's a fucking mini game. And honestly, it's fucking amazing. It's amazing that your main game is so enjoyable and nearly everything between is too. Although I hate the Aerith Cactuar Crush game. Oh my God. It's fine with Yuffie. I hate it with Aerith, but whatever. So yeah, I've talked about the game and the games within the game, but a big part of Final Fantasy VII is its story, obviously. So how is the story? How is the writing? I'll start with this. The character work in this game is outstanding. Mostly everybody in your party is very likable and you just love hearing them banter with each other. A lot of light-hearted and genuinely funny moments happen between Cloud and others. And I say mostly everybody in your party is likable because, and don't kill me for this, it's not that Tifa's unlikable, but she's very bland and boring. Her personality is very flat and uninteresting, even compared to Red 13, who is presented as mostly very serious for the entire first three quarters of the game. But who needs personality when you can just be hot, I guess. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, her presence doesn't hurt the game or its storytelling or anything. I just think her character is not as strong as the others. I mean, she was the weak link in the first game too, character writing wise, but now it's even worse because there are more party members just brimming with personality and charisma. But I guess Tifa's charisma are her thighs, so checkmate. <laughs> Anyway though, I also noticed the tone of this game is decidedly less anime tropey. Vocal deliveries and whatnot lean noticeably further away from the much more anime fueled tones of the first game. And I think that's a great change. It's not like this game isn't anime like at all though. Rebirth still has plenty of anime touches and deliveries, but far less harshly and detrimentally than in Remake. And the toning down of the overall anime tone 
honestly makes Yuffie, who I already thought was a likable character in Intergrade and is a walking anime trope, it makes her that much more likable because now there is an overtly super energetic anime ninja girl mixed in with a group of people who are far less anime than herself. And I think it plays well. Now, the story itself is good, but not without fault. It's interesting and it's intriguing. It definitely stumbles though. For one, I think things start to get sloppy near the end. Even outside of that though, there are some poorly written, poorly explained bits. And I don't mean things that set up future mysteries, just things that make you go, that's dumb or what the fuck is this? Those moments happen. There's also a few pacing trip ups and not just narratively but gameplay wise as well. There are some sections that happen for too long, which was something that happened in Remake as well. It's less of a problem here in Rebirth, but the problem does persist. And then there's a couple of times where yes, there's a mini game and there just shouldn't be. Not even necessarily because the mini game is bad, but because I should be playing the main game at this point for the sake of pacing. Those issues combined are not insignificant enough to be overlooked in Rebirth, but not big enough to do anything besides keep this game from literally being perfect. So yeah, as far as objective critiquing goes, that's more or less all I have to say about Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. Very easily the best Final Fantasy game I've ever played and it's not even close. If I had to put a number on it, I'd confidently give it a 9.5 out of 10. This is probably going to be game of the year unless something absolutely goaded comes out of the woodwork. My friends don't play Final Fantasy, but this game is so good, I desperately want to tell them and encourage them to play Rebirth. The only reason I don't is because I think they should play Remake first, and Remake is just not this good. And if you were curious, I thought Remake was a 7.5. That game had extremely strong combat and a lot of fucking weak points. But okay, I'm done. Thanks for watching. As always, feel free to dive in the comments and tell me how stupid and wrong I am. I know you want to. But on the off chance you just enjoyed this, why not give the video a like or hell, maybe even subscribe to the channel. But whatever you do, thanks for watching. And until next time, I am Waifu Blector. I am just a normal guy. I like hentai. And I can't wait for the third game. Goodbye.